Greetings and salutations. Welcome to this Sabbath evening's Bible study. Earlier on this morning, I was not able to cover all the points at that particular time. And for those of you who were live with us, I'm going to continue from where we left off. These points are of the utmost importance. I'm going to quote one scripture before we actually delve into the content of this Bible study this evening. And that is Romans chapter 8 and verse number 28, where the Bible says, And we know that all things worketh together for good to them that love God and to them who are the called. Finish that. The called according to his purpose. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, friends, earlier on this morning, I shared this current event in the midst of other current events. I'm simply going to extract this one and share a few more points. Notice here, friends, this is actually the Prime Minister of Fiji threatening, yes, friends, I said it, threatening not only the government employers and employees, but the private sector employers and employees stating if they do not receive the Pestilence 19 panacea, then they should not turn up to work. That's what it says right there in the headline. Do you want to see now, friends, how individuals are responding to fear? Do you want to see how people who don't know how to handle the voice of the dragon, the government, threats, how they are now reacting. My brother, Yavuka, sent me this video clip. I'm simply going to share very quickly of what's happening in Fiji as a result of the prime minister speaking as a dragon. And when I say as a dragon, you know exactly what I mean. Freedoms are being restricted. Take a look at this, my friends. There it is on the screen. Now, of course, the language might not be clear to many of us. Hmm. No job, no work. No work. That's actually someone recording the traffic, people lining up to go around that corner to that pavilion to receive the Pestilence 19 inoculation. I'm telling you, my friends, and remember, not only America will speak as a dragon, stripping away our rights, based on Revelation 13, verse 11, but other nations will do so as well. Matthew 24 and verse 9 confirms. Hear me carefully, my friends. Since they are doing this in the health arena, why would we doubt they would do it in the worship arena? As calamities increase, Sunday is enforced as the law of the land. They are going to force us to worship on Sunday or else we won't be able to buy or sell with that in mind. We know what the mark of the beast is. It is Sunday worship by law. The beast, popery. The mark, mark of her authority sunder rest by law however governments even religious entities are now seeing that a digital only economy is a part of the mark of the beast system again during midday power surge i touched on what's happening in china but my friends i have breaking news stay tuned watch this China is again on the China is again on the cusp of creating a new form of government currency that some say could pose a serious economic threat to America and the West. China is about to launch one of the most revolutionary financial projects in the world. They're not cryptocurrencies. Uh, they're not so-called stable coins. In effect, they are uh, the national uh, physical currency of a country just represented in a digital form. 
Eric Bethel is the former U.S. executive director of the World Bank. Bitcoin near record highs, crossing 23,000. He says while the world fixates on private cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. But the digital yuan isn't a payment system, it's actual money. Beijing is busy building a digital version of its own currency, the yuan, also known as the renminbi, to control its citizens and eventually threaten the dominance of the U.S. dollar. They've pretty much created all of the building blocks. To control who, what? To control its citizens and is coming to the United States of America. The foundation has been set. And remember, the puppet masters, the masters of the universe, Popri and his and her allies. They are using the countries in the East, even Caribbean countries, as beta testing ground. Look at this, my friends. Here you have it, friends. There it is. They are calling this digital only economy the mark of the beast. It is not the mark of the beast, but it is connected to it. I covered that during midday power surge. It's right there. It says uh, they can cut off access to people's money once it is a digital only economy and it's coming to America. Blue words on the bottom. Do you remember this, my friends? Blue words. If your economy is only digital, red words, with a flick of a switch, they could leave you without a penny. Past that, what was stated in Russia? Here is the religious leader of Russia. Listen. There it is, friends, stating that Russia is also building a digital-only economy. His response was in a spiritual perspective. You could read the words on the screen. He says it's going to restrict totally limit human freedom. Everybody can see this, my friends. He goes on. People will not be able to buy or sell if they do not go along with government policies. It's right there. The words being generated from the Russian language. Look at this, my friends. Clear as crystal. It says, Reuters, April 1st, 2021, Eastern Caribbean blazes a trail as first, yes, friends, first currency union to launch central bank digital cash. Which islands are now affected here? Blue box at the bottom, Antigua and Barbuda, Grenada, next, St. Kitts and Nevis, and what, friends, St. Lucia, What's going to happen to their rights as a people? They can easily be controlled. All right, friends. That was April 1st. Take a look at Jamaica, fresh off the press. July 7th, 2021. Jamaica Observer. Headline reads, the Bank of, a, the, the Bank of Jamaica, BOJ, to pilot digital currency rollout when? In August. Look at that, my friends. So what's coming to the people of Jamaica? My friends, the point here is we're not going to be able to escape what is coming. Won't be able to escape this. The very system for the mark of the beast is being set in place. And all of these things are connected. Matthew 24, the wars, cyber attacks also include in wars. The famines, yes. The pestilences, yes. And the calamities, they are all connected. Very, very soon, God's people will see the mark of the beast enforced to combat these crises. Am I ready? Are you ready? And right now, what must be the experience we must have to make it in this coming mark of the beast time period? The word of God calls the mark of the beast time period the time of trouble. There is a little time of trouble and there is the great time of trouble, also called Jacob's time of trouble. Look at the experience we must have, my friends. Early writings, page 71. I also saw that many do not realize what they must be 
in order to live in the sight of the Lord without a high priest in the sanctuary. Through what time? The time of trouble. I'm going to focus on that. Those who receive the seal of the living God and not the mark of the beast and are protected in the time of trouble, it says, must reflect the image of Jesus Christ, how friends, fully. And that's why earlier I focus on this chart. Do I need to reiterate the points on this chart? Brothers and sisters, as it was in creation, so it must be in the time of recreation. As it was at creation, when Christ made man in his own image, declared man very good, and then said the words, it is finished. Before Christ says it is finished, the close of intercession in these last days. Before Christ says it is done, the plagues have fallen, the close of human earthly history. The plan of redemption is over. We must allow Jesus to finish that work in us and to clear us very good. Here's my point, my friends. It is possible, oh yes, friends, it is possible for us to be recreated in God's image and also be, be declared very good. It is possible. Here's why it's possible. Because Christ created the world in six days and rested on the seventh and declared the words, it is finished, Genesis 2, 1 and 2. It's possible. That's why we are Seventh-day Adventists. That's why you prospective Bible students of the faith will be baptized as Seventh-day Adventists. It is possible. I was thinking about something when I came home earlier. And the point was, who heard the words, it is finished, that was proclaimed by Christ at creation? My friends, Adam heard it. Eve heard it. Yes, friends. Who else heard it? My friends, the holy angels heard it. They believe it's possible. Imagine when Adam and Eve sinned. The holy angels must have thought, since our God created, declared things very good, and said it is finished, that same God can recreate man. Declare them very good and then say the words, it is finished, it is done. Okay, who else heard those words, it is finished at creation? Mm -hmm. You guess right, Satan also heard those words. Even Satan believes. Yes, friends. And that's why James chapter 2 says, even the devils believe and tremble, but they will not surrender. Do we believe, those of you who are alive? Praise God for your presence. You have come to part two by God's grace. Do you believe that we can be recreated in God's image? Well, friends, let's turn now to Ezekiel chapter 37, the valley of dry bones where we stopped earlier based on circumstances. Watch this now. Ezekiel 37. Now, please take your notepads. You know, it's a teaching session. Get your writing instruments. Verse number one, the Bible says that God brought Ezekiel in vision to a valley of dry bones. A valley of bones. It's very interesting. When you look at context, Ezekiel was living in a time just before the third and final siege, Babylon coming to destroy Jerusalem and the temple. We are now living in a time like Ezekiel. The mark of the beast is coming. Modern day Babylon, Popery, her allies are coming to persecute and attempt to destroy. My friends, we need to study Ezekiel 37. As I said earlier, we have 66 books in the Bible. They are giving us 66 perspectives at least of the one gospel message. From Genesis to Revelation. Yes, friends. God formed man out of dust and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became alive. A living soul is the same 
principle in Ezekiel 37. Next point. All right. So who do the bones represent? We know this. Verse number 11. The bones represent God's professed people. And listen to how they felt. Verse number 11. It says, uh, these bones are the whole house, house of Israel. Behold, they say, the bones are talking. That means the bones are not dead. The bones are talking, or our bones are dried, or our hope is lost. Yes, we are cut off from for our parts. They felt as if there was no hope. They felt as if they were in a lost condition. Do I see my need? Do you see your need? Let me be very succinct and plain without any ambiguity. My friend, the professed Seventh-day Adventist people, including other Christians from other denominations, they're all in a valley of death dead bones. Look at verse number two. The Bible says now in verse number two that the bones were very dry, which means they have been in a lost condition for quite a long time. Notice in verse three, what question did Christ ask Ezekiel in verse number three? The question was, can these bones live? Can these bones live? That's our title. Can these bones live? Not literal bones now. Can these people, the professed people of God, live? Can they be saved? And I said to you earlier, my friends, I'll tell you when we uh, get into the second gear. This morning I shared with you by God's grace, this afternoon, I shared the first place in the scripture we find bones is in the Garden of Eden. In Genesis chapter 2, go there with me, my friends. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 21 to verse number 23. The Bible tells us that God made Eve from a rib, from Adam. And when Eve was formed, the Bible says, Adam said to Eve in verse number 23, This is now bone of my bones. Oh, my friends. And flesh of my flesh. My friends, I am going to give you a statement. Please write down this statement. When God made Adam and Eve the bones, God declared them very good. Very good. But man sinned. Very good. And today, God wants to recreate us in his image. Before he says it is finished, before he says it is done. Here's the point. Ezekiel 37 says the bones are very dry. Oh, brothers and sisters, here's my point. Now write this down. From very dry bones to very good bones. Do I need to repeat that, my friends? From very dry bones... Ezekiel 37, to very good, Genesis 1 verse 31, very good bones. Yes, friends, bones. And remember, Adam and Eve at creation were living, living in the sight of God and Christ was not a intercessor. That's our statement, my friends, in early writings, page 71. Yes, and we must get an experience before Jesus says, it is finished and close the work of intercession. Look with me, my friends. Ezekiel chapter 37. Can these bones live? Praise God. The bones can live. Look with me now at verse number 4 and verse number 5. My friends, write these points down, those of you alive. God told Ezekiel, it was a two-step process for the bones to live. What did I just say? Come on, type it in. This is Bible study, my friends. Again, I cannot preach this. I have to teach this. Listen, friends. It's a two-step process. Yes, two-step process for the bones, the dry bones, the very dry bones to become very good bones. What was the first step? All right. The first step 
has several points therein. The first point, Ezekiel was to prophesy of a promise of God breathing upon the bones. I have to read this so you can see it for yourself. Look at verse 4. And he said unto me, Ezekiel, prophesy unto these bones, and say unto these bones, O you dry bones, hear God's word. Verse 5, I will cause breath to enter into you. That sounds like creation, right? And you shall live. Now think about this. The Bible says, watch carefully, Ezekiel, prophesy to the bones. Watch this. If the bones, which represent people, were dead, can Ezekiel speak to the dead? No. All right. That means the bones are living people. Amen. Why is that point so important? I'll tell you now. What are the two meanings for God's breath? God's breath. Number one, the breath of life. All of us have the breath of life. Amen. These very dry bones had the breath of life because Ezekiel could not be talking and prophesying to dead people. Amen. They already had the breath of life. But what's the second application for God's breath? Here it is. The Holy Spirit of God. John chapter 20. Put it down. And verse number 22. So come with me now. So based on verse 4. And verse 5 of Ezekiel 37, what breath was God telling Ezekiel to prophesy about that was coming? Not the breath of life, they had that already. But the outpouring of the Spirit of God. All right, friends. Here's the quote connecting with John chapter 20 and verse number 22. There it is, my friends. God breathing. Christ breathing upon the disciples was as a few drops before the plentiful shower to be given on the day of Pentecost. Praise God for that, brothers and sisters. So tell me now, what are we to be prophesying about so the very dry bones can become alive spiritually? And be declared very good bones. We must prophesy the coming former rain. Amen. The coming latter rain. Praise God. Now, let's continue in the first of two processes. Look with me. Verse number six. What was Ezekiel told to also prophesy about? By the way, do you see from the past few weeks, I have been focusing emphasizing on God's people receiving the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain, brothers and sisters, God has placed his love in my heart for you, for you, those of you alive, Save to serve international, first-time viewers, so we can all receive the experience, yes, and move from being very dry bones to very good bones, back to my point, all right, verse number six, he was to prophesy of coming sinews. The Bible says coming sinews. And we saw that sinews represent tendon or ligament. Sinews, it is something that unite bone with bone. Don't you forget that, friends. Bone with bone. Besides that, verse number six, God says now Ezekiel prophesy. I will cover them with skin. The first place in the Bible, we find Christ covering bones with skin is Adam and Eve after they sinned. Yes, friends, watch carefully now. And Christ used coats of skin. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 21. Mm -hmm. Hold on. And what would the coats represent? has to be righteousness because they had sinned. They were naked and Christ covered them with a coat. From the skin, he made a coat. Revelation 19, verse 7, verse 8 says, Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to God. Why? The marriage of the Lamb is come and his wife, the church, hath made herself ready. 
and to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. That's it, friends. Prophesy, Ezekiel. This is what God wants to do for those very dry bones. Hold on. Those of you who are alive, what scripture comes to mind? In this context, that Jesus wants to cover our nakedness. Is it not Revelation 3? The message to Laodicea? The very Sabbath school lesson that was covered for the past three weeks, even this morning, by the evangelists, Richard Buchanan and Jared Ryan. That's it. This is the message that must come to the church. Read on. Verse number six. What else did God promise to Ezekiel? I'm going to give you flesh, flesh, and breathe breath, my friends. Those two words, flesh and breath, from Ezekiel 37. And verse number six is further amplified, explained in Ezekiel 36. Which means to give us power to surrender every known sin. Power to choose never ever to sin again. Ezekiel chapter 36. Look with me at verse 26. Flesh and breath. Flesh and spirit. Verse 26. A new heart also will I give you. A new spirit, that's breath, will I put within you. And I will take away, I will, a promise, take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you a heart of flesh, that's the flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. Amen. And you shall keep my judgments and you shall do them. Praise God. So what's the purpose? For God giving us the breath, giving us the Holy Spirit, is for us to obey. Look with me at verse 28 of Ezekiel 26. The Bible now says, Then we shall be God's people and Christ will be our God. My friends, we need to become very good bones. Now, what do you think Ezekiel did? The very first step God told him, Ezekiel as an obedient son of God did. And verse number 7 of Ezekiel 37, the Bible says Ezekiel prophesied to the bones all those promises. What happened in verse number 7? Write these points down. Verse number 7, Ezekiel 37, I want to read this. It says, so I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise, behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. Three things, shaking, noise and shaking. A shaking happened. What next, my friends? Bone came together, bone with his bone. Remember now, what would be the application? Yes, my friends, once these promises these messages are proclaimed, bone will unite with bone. And the first of two primary applications are these. Put this down. Two primary applications. Number one, husband with wife. Genesis chapter 2, verse 21 through verse number 23. Yes. So once husband and wife hear the promised prophesying. The promised prophecy, the promised message of all that we just covered. Husband and wife must have deep heart searching, deep self-examination, and say, husband, saying, wife, let us unite completely in spirit and in truth. Let us lay aside our differences. Oh, yes, we are told in early writings Page 119, about pride and selfishness. It says, watch carefully, if pride and selfishness were laid aside, five minutes would solve most difficulties. It says, angels grieved. 
God displeased by the hours spent in justifying self. And the same quotation says, it is not God's ideal or God's will for his messengers to sit and listen to a husband, a wife who is selfish, arrogant, and filled with pride, justifying himself, herself in sin. As a result, their marriages are broken. No, that's not God's purpose for his messengers. Time is almost finished. Pause. So what must husband and wife extract from what we just covered? Bone with bone must unite. You think I'm finished? By God's grace, I'm just starting. Now let's move on. In the Bible, bone with bone, does that only point to husband and wife? Sink the clutch. Accelerate. Let's go now. Next point. My friends, throughout scripture, bones are also connected or linked to, used in a parabolic sense, to represent brother with brother, sister with sister. Yes, friends, brethren with brethren, sisters in the church with sisters in the church. Don't take my words for it. Let's connect two scriptures, by the way, and make it. Much easier for you. Look at the screen, my friends. Second Samuel chapter 5, verse number 1. The Bible reads, Then came all the tribes of Israel to David. How many friends? All the tribes of Israel to David. And what did they say? Blue words. Behold, we are thy bone. We are thy bone. We are thy flesh. There it is, my friends. The bones come together. Our tribes must come together in spirit and in truth. Praise God. I'm not finished yet. Skip on down to the second scripture. Ephesians. Chapter 5. Look with me at verse number 30. What does that say, my friends? In verse 30. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. My friends, professed Christians then are whom? Talk to me, my friends. They're whom? They are a part of Christ's body, Christ's bones. Look at verse 31. It mentions father and mother, husband and wife, bones. Look at verse 32. The church members, bones coming together. I want to ask you a question, my friends. In the Bible, in those of you who are alive in the Bible, was there a time when there was a message proclaimed, a promise, promise, God pouring out his spirit, hmm. and bones came together. Brethren were united. Where in the scripture do we find that? Particularly, I'll wait on you, my friends. I'll wait on you. Is it not the disciples? Hmm? In the upper room, what led the disciples into the upper room? Talk to me, my friends. It was a promise that was preached by Jesus. The Father will bestow the Holy Spirit. And once the disciples, the 11 disciples heard that, what happened, my friends? What happened? Bone with bone united. They laid aside their differences. Yes, brothers and sisters, I told you. There are 66 books in the Bible. They're giving you the same gospel story from 66 different perspectives. And there are more. Look at the screen. Much easier for you. Acts chapter 1, verse 5. This is the promise in verse 5. Christ speaking, for John truly baptized with water. All right, but you shall, that's a promise in the future, but you shall, the Bible says, you shall, you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. Look at verse 14, what happened now? Bone came to his bone. Verse 14, these all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication. How many of them were there? A hundred and twenty. Oh, brothers and sisters. 
Look at the red words. Look at verse 17. Who is primarily in verse 17? Judas. Look at verse 25. What happened to Judas? Judas, by transgression, fell. Do you know what that means? There was a shaking. There was a shaking. What does Ezekiel 37 say in verse number in verse number 7? There was a noise. Behold, a shaking, and the bones came together. Bone to his bone. What a connection, friends. What happened at the first advent? Was there a shaking? Hold on. Was there a promise of the coming or pouring of the rain? The Holy Ghost, yes. What happened thereafter? A shaking. Who was shaking out? Judas Iscariot. Then what happened? Bone came together with bone, brothers and sisters. Is that clear? Go back with me to Ezekiel chapter 37. I'm telling you, my friends, there's so much to share. As I said earlier, my friends, I'll say it again. If when we come together, you're not being spiritually edified, my friends, do not follow, support, save to serve, prophesy again, ministers. Don't, don't. You're wasting your time. But if you're being blessed by God, you know exactly what to do. Bone came to his bone. Acts chapter 2, look at verse number 4 now. It says, verse 1 rather, verse 1, And when the day of Pentecost was for to come, they were all with one accord in one place. Bone came to his bone. Verse number 4, And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Brothers and sisters, let me say it this way. When you go back to chapter 37 of Ezekiel, the Bible tells us that once Ezekiel did the first of two instructions, something was missing. And that which was missing is the bones came together, but there was no breath. There was no spirit. Look at verse number 8 of Ezekiel chapter 37. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews, the flesh, sinews, that which connects bone with bone or muscle with bone. Listen, the sinews and the flesh came upon them and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. So my friends, what was lacking? No breath. They did not yet receive the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. My friends, how long? were the 11 disciples and then 12. Matthias was brought in to make 12 and the 120. How long were they in the upper room for? Approximately 10 days. 10 days. Bone came to bone. But as yet, the day of Pentecost had not yet come. Are you seeing this, my friends? So, my friends, when will Pentecost be repeated? The outpouring of the latter rain without measure. At the mark of the beast crisis, once we make the right choice. Mm -hmm. So what must we now be experiencing? An upper room experience. Let me say it this way. An upper home experience. An upper house experience. Wife and husband, spouse with spouse, brother with brother, sister with sister, sibling with sibling. Yes, friends, laying aside differences, bone uniting with bone in preparation to receive the breath of God, the Holy Spirit of God, the latter end power, and it makes sense. Because to lay aside differences, that means you're getting victory over selfishness. Victor over pride. Let me say it this way. You are receiving victory over sin. And that is the former reign experience. In other words, the bone coming together with bone is a former reign experience. And then you can now receive the latter reign experience. Come to verse 9. What was that second step that God told Ezekiel now? to do in order for the very dry bones to become very good bones. 
Ezekiel prophesied to the wind. What? You mean I must go outside and speak to the wind? Listen to this. Prophesied to the wind. And what was Ezekiel to say to the wind? Verse 9. Verse 9. Thus saith the Lord God, prophesy to the wind, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. Brothers and sisters, prophesy to the four winds, the wind rather, come from the four winds, and breathe upon these very dry bones that they may live, that they may become very good bones. So much in that point. The wind represents the Holy Ghost. Come, Holy Ghost. In other words, the second step, I want to be very clear. The second step is this. Watch carefully. The second step is Ezekiel was to pray for the Holy Spirit to be bestowed upon all the bones. So what must pastors be doing? Mm -hmm. What must elders be doing? Deacons be doing? Youth leaders be doing? What must husbands be doing? Fathers be doing? Wives be doing? Mothers be doing? Young missionaries be doing? Lord, pour out your spirit upon my Bible study group, upon my spouse, Upon my children, mm -hmm. upon my brother, upon my sister. Praying for the outpouring of the Holy Ghost upon the bones. By the way, verse number 9. Look at the timetable for this. Verse 9. It says, come from the four winds of the earth. I want to ask you a question, my friends. Where in the Bible do we find Four winds, four winds, four, four, four winds means corner of the earth. All right, friends, this should be a global movement, a global prayer. That's why several weeks ago, we had all night prayer meeting, a day of fasting and prayer. And we talked about putting on the whole armor of God. I'm going to end on that point. The whole armor of God. Hold on. It's now. Now. Revelation 7 is that scripture. Verse 1 through verse 3. Speaking about the four winds of the earth. What time period does Revelation chapter 7 cover? It's the mark of the beast time period. Versus the seal of God, the Sunday law time period. How close are we, my friends? What are we now to be doing? The current event we covered earlier confirms the system, no buy, no sell. The system of the mark of the beast is already in place. What did God tell Ezekiel to do? What are we to now be doing? Look at the screen, my friends. Pray for the outpouring of the Holy Ghost upon the bones. Page 37, Acts of the Apostles. This was what the disciples were doing. This was what Christ did and what Christ wants to do now. Listen, the disciples prayed with intense earnestness. What were they praying for? The outpouring of the Spirit of God. Red words on top, the disciples putting away all differences, all desire for the supremacy. That's it. Former reign. They came close. One more time. They came close. One more time. They came close together in Christian fellowship, bone with bone. And once they prayed, what did Christ do next? Brothers and sisters. Once they prayed, second paragraph, it says, my friends, the disciples felt their need, their spiritual need, and cried to the Lord for the holy unction. Listen, blue words, they did not ask for a blessing for themselves merely. They were praying for the Holy Spirit to also be poured out upon those around them. What did Christ do next? Brothers and sisters, now in obedience 
to the word of the Savior, the disciples offered their supplications for the gift. Is the gift a promise? Red words. And in heaven, brothers and sisters, Christ added his intercession. Brothers and sisters, he claimed the gift of the Spirit that he might pour it out upon his people. Praise God for that statement, my friends. I want to ask you a question. Is Jesus going to remain forever in the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary, pleading for the Father to send the Holy Ghost? Is he going to do this forever? Oh, no. So what experience do we need? Back to the chart. Right column. Before Christ says it is finished, intercession is over. I covered that this morning in the sermon. Before Christ says it is done, the plagues are finished. 6,000 years of the plan of redemption. We must ask God to recreate in us his image and breathe into us. The Spirit of God, my friends, former rain and latter rain experience. Now, friends, as we close, go to verse number 10 of Ezekiel chapter 37. Once Ezekiel did this, the second step in the process so that the very dry bones could become very good bones, the Bible says the Spirit came. So once you do what God says, the promise is going to come. Praise God. The Bible says in verse number 10, And I prophesied as he, as he told me, and the breath came into them. Is there hope? Yes, there's hope. And they lived and stood up. Write down the word stood up. And they stood up, my friends. They stood up upon their feet and exceeding great army wait a minute here so what's the end result of the valley of dry bones what is the end result christ wants the very dry bones to become one very good bones two to stand upon their feet all right to stand upon their feet number three and once they stand upon their feet they do the, they become and do the work of God's army. God's army. Huh, hold on there. God's army. Write this quotation down. Young people. I want to speak to you right now. Are there any young people live with us? Young people. We are told in the book Education. Page 271. It says. With such an army. Of workers. As our youth. That's why I focus my God-given attention on young people so often and frequently and intentionally. It says, with such an army of workers as our youth might furnish, how soon will the message of a crucified, risen, and soon-coming Savior be brought to the world? How soon might the end come? Mm -hmm. The end of suffering, the end of sorrow, the end of sin. But how can the young people become an army for Christ if they are not hearing the messages in the first of these two steps? They're attending the wrong local SDA church, whether conference connected or independent of the SDA conference, or they are going to the churches of Babylon, Catholic Church, Baptist, Presbyterian, Pentecostal, Lutheran, Church of God, non-denominational. You're in the wrong church and wrong religion. Come out of her, my people. All right, friends. We want our young people to be that army. That's why as pastors, youth leaders, parents like Ezekiel, we must pray, come Holy Spirit, breathe upon these bones. How many of us parents have children who are very dry bones? They have been in a backsliding condition 
for several months, several years. Oh, friends, is this message applicable to you? If it's so, type in the words, nail in a sure place. All right, back to this. Verse number 10, it says now, once the breath came, they stood upon their feet. I prayed, Lord, what does that mean? For the bones to stand upon their feet. It means to preach the message. Get the experience, live, teach, and preach present truth. Look at Ezekiel chapter 2 to confirm. Ezekiel chapter 2. I won't spend much time here. Look at verse 1. Son of man, stand upon thy feet. What happened to those dry, those dry bones? They stood upon their feet. Verse 2. And speak what I say to you. Verse 2. And the spirit entered into me, Ezekiel, when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet. That's it, friends. Verse 3. Ezekiel, I send thee. To the house of Israel? Yes, my friends. What's the purpose then for the dry bones to receive God's spirit? There is a work to be done within the Seventh-day Adventist movement. A work to be done without in Babylon, in the world, my It's time. Let's move on quickly. Ezekiel 37, verse number 10 says, Once they stood upon their feet, they became a great army, an exceeding great army. Hold on. Stand upon your feet, an exceeding great army. Those of you who are alive. What was that theme we covered during all night prayer meeting? That day of fasting and prayer. What was it, my friends? Put on the whole armor of God. For what purpose? Why must we put on the whole armor of God? One reason, my friends, because so that we can stand. An army is because a battle is ensuing. Look at the screen, my friends. There it is. Ephesians chapter 6. Put on the whole armor of God. So we can stand in these last days, brothers and sisters. Stand. My friends, I began to do a Bible study. Notice here. And remember, the feet is the gospel. Amen. By the way, I began to do a Bible study. Looking up the word army. The first place. Listen to this time period. The first place. God declared his people an army. Is Exodus chapter 7. Look at the screen. Verse 4. What time was this? The time of Exodus. What was falling? The ten plagues. What could that represent in the last days? Okay, my friends. Revelation 16, verse 1, verse 2. The time of the Sunday law crisis. The mark of the beast. All right. So what must Christ have before the mark of the beast? His army. A valley of very dry bones must become very good bones. Brothers and sisters, the time period is clear. Who wants to be ready, my friends? But hear me carefully. Before Christ closes the work of intercession, I'm closing now. Everything we just covered, we must experience. If we don't experience what we just covered in this Sabbath evening Bible study, it's going to be too late for you. Look at the statement as I close. Then I saw Jesus lay off his priestly attire. What does that mean? It is finished. And clothe himself with his most kingly robes. The plagues were falling upon the inhabitants of the earth. Some were denouncing God and cursing God. Others rushed to the people of God and begged to be taught, begged to be taught. That's why I'm teaching now. 
and begged to be taught how they might escape his judgment. But the saints had nothing for them. The last tear for sinners had been shed. The last agonizing prayer offered. The last burden borne. The last warning given. And the great question is, which class, which group am I going to be in when Christ is about to lay off the priestly work and say, it is finished? The plagues begin to fall. Seventh plague, it is done. What class, what group are you going to be in? My friends, listen, it's time to act. Time is almost finished when the saints and all heaven were interested for their salvation, they had no interest for themselves. So what, pastor, were they interested in? What were they focused on? What absorbed their attention? Second sentence, they did not choose life. And now there was no atoning blood to cleanse the guilty. No compassionate savior to plead for them and cry, spear, spear, spear the sinner a little longer. Mm -mm. All heaven had united with Jesus, bone with bone. That's Christ and his people, bone with bone. Listen now, as they, the unrepentant, heard also the fearful words. What were the fearful words, my friends? It is done. It is finished. Why those two statements? Why those two statements? Now you see the validity of the chart. Right top column. It is finished. Intercession is over. It is done. The plan of redemption for 6,000 years, friends. The plagues. It is done. Do you see it, friends? Which group am I going to be in? Which group would you be in? It says, and as mercy's sweet voice died away, fear and horror, horror seized the wicked with terrible distinctness. The unrepentant, they heard the words. What words? Too late. Too late. I do not want to hear those words. Do you want to hear those words? Too late too late my friends how are you going to respond today those of you alive do you understand what you heard today if god gave you good comprehension just type in the words i understand i understand now since you understand what is your decision my friends do you see a need for baptism? Very, very soon, I'm going to make the announcement for the next baptismal class, the series, in preparation for water baptism, water rebaptism, in preparation for the baptism of the latter rain. Do I see my need? Do you see your need? Husband, wife, bone with bone. Yes, sibling rivalry, bone with bone. Do you see your need? Parents, children, bone with bone. It's time. Brothers with brothers in the church, bone with bone. Do you see your need? Sisters with sisters, bone with bone. It's time for an uproom experience. Father in heaven, we are thankful for this Sabbath. I can say now, it is finished. The sun is about to set. The Sabbath is about to end. It is finished. Lord, may we be found transitioning from very dry bones to very good bones. Can these bones live? Yes. Lord, we surrender. Save us, we pray. Save us, dear God. And we thank you for sweet salvation. Breathe upon us. Light, power, sweet love, joy, and peace. Let the devil not breathe upon us. And unholy influence. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Bring us back tomorrow for midday power surge in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Maranatha.